there, welcome to Scrap and Coffee. I'm going to make a quick wallet style folio. And for that we are going to start with piece A that has two score lines and I'm going to fold and burnish on both score lines. So I was having a lot of fun with our with my latest folio, the flex folio, and I'm kind of doing this in the same style of build up. Um, not so much on the cover but on the inside. So for the smaller flap on piece A, I'm going to use a corner rounder. So if you like that, you can do that as well. And that's it for piece A for now. And then the next piece is piece B that also has two score lines. And for this one, I'm going to apply the tape on the bumpy side between the cut edge and the first half inch score line. So this is a project that comes together really quick. It will make a perfect gift with some pictures in it. It won't hold a ton of pictures, but um, I think it cost me about an hour to cut, score and construct this whole thing. So I'm going to taper that half inch flap that has the tape on it. And now you will see that I'm going to fold and burnish on these score lines, but I recommend you don't do it. You just only pre-fold on your first half inch score line because it will be easier to attach it um, when it's laying flat. So don't fold and burnish in this stage. First attach it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place our first piece A on top of piece B. So I'm writing it down, but uh, on the other end I'm going to turn it around. So this is how we are going to do it. So A is going on top of that half inch of B. However, it's easier for me to uh, work with the pieces laying uh, the other way around. So that's why I'm turning it around. But you want to have it in this order. So now my uh, flaps are standing up because I fold and burnish on the score lines already and that makes it a little bit more difficult. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the bottom edge and the top edge and I'm making sure that I'm still able to see my score line on piece B. And that will make that it will fold over nicely. Give that a good burnish and then at this moment you can fold and burnish your score lines on piece B. So this is the first part and then we also have two pieces of C. And here I was thinking about rounding the corners of this piece but I decided not to do it. At this point I can always do it uh, later on if I want to. So here I am only pre-folding the score lines and also for these pieces I'm going to attach the tape on the bumpy side. So this will go on the side and you will have about 1 8 of an inch space on the top and the bottom. So place your tape on the bumpy side on both pieces. And quickly burnish it. So we are going to have one of each on either side and they are going to be attached on A or actually A is going on top of C so I'm placing uh, piece A on top of piece C so your construction is on the outside of the wallet. So here again make sure you're still able to see your score line of piece C and you will have about 1 8 of an inch on your top and your bottom. And I'm calling this a wallet and I'm, I'm not quite sure when you're allowed to call something a wallet but that's what it's called. So here I do the same thing on the other side and I'm just eyeballing it here and I'm just praying that they will line up after attaching them. So if you don't feel comfortable you can also measure, make a little pencil mark on where you want to have them so they uh, 
so when you fold them close that they will line up uh, nicely and they're not like crooked but I think I did a pretty good job so now I'm folding and burnishing on both score lines of these C pieces and as you see it's not too bad and you have a little bit of space in between your pieces I think it's a little under a quarter of an inch So this is actually the base construction of your wallet but I'm also going to uh, add some pockets on the inside of our C flaps and for that we have two pieces of D so these are going to form pockets and we are going to apply tape on the dented side on the three sides that have a score line between the cut edge and the score line so I'm starting with just one because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them both but I did use both and I'm also going to use my envelope punch board to make a little um, yeah I'm going to punch it <laughs> so the pocket that what's in there is easily reachable but it's also just um, a nice feature just give it another look so in order to do that in the center I'm going to line up the left edge just over the two and a half inch mark just slightly over because this piece has a measurement with one sixteenth of an inch so uh, yeah really slightly over the two and a half inches then we are going to miter the corners I'm doing it on the bumpy side here only for the reason that it was with my lighting a little bit better for me to see at this point. And then you can fold and burnish on all score lines. Make sure there is no overlapping of your half inch flaps. And then open up your C flaps so they are going on the inside and for this one on the right flap you are going to start with lining up the right bottom corner and because of that one of 16 you will have enough um, the pocket is a little bit smaller so you will be able to stay in between your cut edge and your score line if that makes sense so I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece D, apply my tape, miter, fold and burnish and then this one will go on the left side and here you're going to start lining up the left bottom corner and work your way inwards towards your score line. And again the measurement should provide that that will fit easily. You might have a little bit of space between your pocket and your score line. Depending on how your precise your cutting was. So when you score these pieces in your scoreboard, just score at half an inch, turn a piece around and score again at half an inch. That's why the cutting guide says score half an inch on both sides. So that's that. Then we are going to apply a large flap. That's piece uh, D, of course. And here one score line tape goes on the dented side. And we are going to also taper that half inch where the tape is applied. And this flap, I might regret placing it in the folio, but we will see um, when we are decorating it. It might give just a little bit too much bulk. And that might result in me removing it, but um, yeah, we'll see. I'm just going to show you that I've placed it. I'm going to place it on the B piece and I'm going to line it up with the score line here on the top. So you want to make sure that you still have your uh, gusset there. Uh, but you can also apply it on the bottom if you want. So here I'm checking for if I want to fold this uh, up, how does that work? But for me we're good enough so I'm going to place it right there. And you can, like I said, you can also leave it out if you're worried about the bulk. So here I'm pointing to that score line and I'm just going to bump it up against that score line but make sure you're still able to see it. And of course line up your side edges. So 
So we are going to put a paper clip on it now because I'm going to make sure that I can hold it in place with my pattern paper. And I'm not going to use any magnets now, but you can use a magnet if you want, of course. And then we can start working on our first layer. And those are two pieces of F. Both have two score lines, they are exactly the same. And we are going to apply the tape on the dented side between your cut edge and the first half inch score line. So we do that for both pieces. So the cutting guide is available on my website, scrapandcoffee.com. You go to projects, click on the image of the uh, wallet folio and then you can find a download button that uh, gives you a free PDF file of the cutting guide. So fold and burnish on both score lines. And then once we've done that, we have piece G that's going to be a pocket. So score lines on three sides and tape on the dented side. And again here, I'm going to use my envelope punch board to make that punch in the center of the pocket. And for this, you are going uh, to line it up to a 9 16 of an inch. And that's also over the two and a half inch mark. But you go a little further over than with your first pockets. And if you're a little bit off the center, really you're not going to see it. Then we're going to miter the corners and fold and burnish on those score lines. And like always, make sure you don't overlap on your half inch flaps. So we check that and once we're good, we can burnish those last score lines. And then this piece G will be attached on one of your F pieces. So for that make sure your folded edge is on the bottom and you have your gusset underneath the piece. So you fold on your second score line for piece F. And then you line up the pocket on the bottom of that piece. So here we go, make sure you get it as flat as you can and then first I'm going to place the corners of the pocket where I want them and then bring up the side edges along that piece and give that a good burnish. So that's one and on the second piece F I'm going to place a flap, that's going to be a piece H. Uh, so one score line and tape goes on the dented side and we are going to taper that half inch. Now if you want to have a pocket on both of the F pieces or you want to have a flap on both of the F pieces, of course that's also uh, possible and then you just make two of those pieces. But I just thought it was fun to do not the same on both, just do something different and give you different options. So fold and burnish on that score line and again this will go on the bottom. So again make sure you fold it on your second score line. So your gusset is underneath the piece and you line up the flap on the bottom of piece F. So again I'm just placing those corners where I want them. And then see if I did a good job and then I'm going to really press on it and burnish it. Now for closure for these two I have two pieces of eye that also have one score line. And again tape goes on the dented side for both pieces between the cut edge and the score line. So I probably will do some videos for this project on how I do my matting. I've done it before, I'm not doing it very often because it's hard for me to film. Uh, but I think I will do it because several people requested me to show them how I did several things. So I will try to show that in this project. I'm going to use my corner rounder again on these pieces.
and then taper that half inch flap. I almost forgot here, but I always like to do it before I fold. You can easily do it after you fold, but it's just something that I personally prefer. So then fold and burnish those score lines and then we will attach one of each on piece F. So this is going to close the pocket. And again, I just removed the tape backing completely. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make sure that piece F is laying flat as possible. So I'm folding that piece out there and then I can attach it a little bit easier. Again, starting at those corners and then see if I'm nicely lined up and press it down. So that's one and we are going to do the same thing for the other piece. But again, here I'm using a paper clip because I'm going to use I'm thinking about an envelope closure on these pieces, but it can also become a swing tab or something else. But I think it will be an envelope closure. So here I do the same thing. And always be careful when you use paper clips on your pieces that you don't damage your cardstock. That one is attached and again I'm just using a paper clip to hold it close for now. So these can go in the folio and it doesn't really matter how you place them it's just how you prefer them and I'm going to place the pocket on the left side and the flap on the right side but you can also change that if you want just go with however you like. So this is how I'm going to do it so what I will do is just place the paper clips to the other side so it's a little bit easier with attaching it into the folio. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to taper the half inch only on the side that is on the outside of the folio. So I'll show you in a second. So one side only and you don't even have to do it necessarily but I just like to do it. And then you will be folding on your half inch score line so your gusset will be visible. And then you bump it up against the half inch, no, I'm sorry, against the, on the edge of piece A. So you, you want to see the score line of piece B. And then make sure you're lined up on the edge, on your left edge. And that's the first piece. And we're going to do the same thing with the other piece, but only on the right side of the folio. So again, here I'm tapering. A half inch only on the right side and again fold on the half inch and remove your tape backing and we are going to do the same thing so I'm lining it up at the bottom without giving too much pressure on it see if I'm lined up on the edge and then press it down but I see that I've pressed it down here before I saw if I was right but it was good. And then you will have about one eighth of an inch space in between these pieces. That's what you want. And then we go to layer two. And here we have a large piece, J, and three pieces. Three pieces of K. And J has two score lines again. Tape goes on the dented side between the cut edge and the first score line. And we are going to taper that half inch. And then we are going to fold and burnish on both score lines. That's one, and then the other one. So we're gonna little gusset, but for now you wanna be folded on your second score line. So your gusset is underneath you. 
and then we have the three pieces of K that are going to make a belly band and I'm going to remove the letter of piece J here because I won't be able to do it after I've placed my belly bands so I'm just going to uh, make sure that they are evenly spread out and to do so I'm going to measure all my JP's so I had to figure this out for a little bit but I come to the conclusion that I'm going to place my two outer belly bands 7 eighths of an inch from the cut edge so I'm going to make a little pencil mark here at 7 eighths of an inch and I do that on both sides turn the piece over to the folded edge and do the same thing there so that's going to be my guideline for um, placing those belly bands straight on my piece So that's prepared and now I have to apply the tape to the belly band so that's I'm, I'm going to do that quick so they both have two score lines and the tape goes on a dented side on uh, both that have inch flaps and I will be honest with you at this moment where there is no better paper on there yet this is not my favorite piece on how it looks on the end Hopefully, I'm more happy with it when the pattern paper is on there. But we'll see. It was just something that looked better in my head than it does in real life. Sometimes that happens. Um, but then on the other hand, it might look pretty good after the pattern paper is on there. So I'm placing my first belly band and I'm lining it up with that pencil mark and the folded edge. So it's 7 eighths of an inch removed from the cut edge. And then we are going to find the pencil mark on the top and bring our belly band up there and stick that down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Line up the bottom. And then stick it down on the top. Have a little bit of tape overhang there. And now what I need to do is determine where my middle belly band is going to be. So I'm going to measure. And in the end, the best thing that I could do was find the center between my two pieces. And then mark. 7 8 of an inch from the center on both sides and that's what i'm doing here and i think the center was a little over one and a half inches from the side you can also eyeball this of course i was being way too precise but that's just what i do so again after i've made those pencil marks i can line up that belly band So this will give you the opportunity to place one large photo mat between all, behind all three belly bands and we can place something over and under and well, you will see in the end. You can play around with it a little bit. So I do hope when it's all done, it looks better than it does now to me. <laughs> but I'm still going ahead with it. We'll see. So we open everything up again and then we are going to place it. In there so here I'm going to line it up with the half inch flaps of our previous pieces so it's going to be bumped up against that half inch making sure that I am nicely lined up with my side edges and here I had the feeling that my piece was curving a little bit so I had to press it down in the middle And then just burnish that down. And then we have one more layer. So here we have our pieces. Um, 
L, two pieces of L, and they are a bit longer here. They are a bit longer here than they will be in the cutting guide, and you will see in a minute why. Um, but these pieces have two score lines, one eighth of an inch cuts it, and tape goes on the dented side again. So we place that, and on top of these pieces will go a small pocket, your pieces M. So tape goes on the dented side between the three, uh, the cut edge and the three sides of your score line. And we are going to burnish everything down. And then we are going to fold on both our score lines of piece L. So let's start with that. So once we've done that, again I'm making that punch with the envelope punch board in the pocket. And especially for this one you want to do something because it's a small pocket and you want to be able to reach things that are in there. So here you line it up with one and five eighths of an inch. One and five eighths of an inch. And of course also miter your corners of the pocket. There we go, fold and burnish on the score lines. And that will go on top of that piece L. So I'm removing the tape backing, I've prepared both our end pieces at this moment. And for piece L you will have your folded edge laying on the bottom and then you are going to line up that pocket just like we did before with the other pocket on the flap that we did on this first layer and here right away when I've placed this piece I was thinking my L piece is too long to my liking I don't like this visually um, but I just put on both pockets and we are going to place one in the folio. I just needed to see how that was going to look. But actually at this moment I knew I, I wanted to change it. But So open everything up and here we are going to place one on the left side of the folio and one on the right side so again I'm doing the same thing I'm tapering that half inch only on the side that goes on the outer edge just like you can see here and then I'm going to start replacing the one on the left so I remove that tape backing make sure you fold it on your half inch score line so your gusset is visible for you and again you bump it up against that half inch of your previous large J piece and make sure you're lined up on the edge, on the left edge and place that down. So I was looking and yes I was thinking I'm going to cut it down by an inch. So I'm measuring and yeah. So I'm going to do that for the second piece, for this piece before I attach it, I'm going to cut off one inch and the other piece I will do later um, off camera because I'm going to see what's the best way of doing it. Maybe I have to remove it out of the folio or cut it by hand, we'll see. But um, So I cut off one inch and the measurement in the cutting guide um, is the measurement where the one inch is already cut off. See that's different and that difference and that just looks better to me. So again here I'm folding on that half inch and then I'm going to attach it all the way on the right side of the folio. 
again making sure I'm lined up on the right edge and on the bottom and sometimes with those gussets in the pieces it can be a little bit harder so just take your time on that and don't be too hard on yourself and then in the middle there goes a flap and I needed to make sure that my measurement was right and also I'm thinking like am I going to keep this one on the length that I have and I think I will for now I'm leaving it because I think it would be fun that the middle piece is a little bit longer than the two pieces on the outside uh, but again I can change my mind but we'll see tape goes on the dented side and again this piece has a 1 8 of an inch gusset so you are going to fold on both your score lines burnish those and then when folded on the half inch score line we are going to remove the tape backing and place this piece in between our two previous pieces and you want to do that where you have about one of an eight, eight one eighth of an inch space on either side so I'm just eyeballing that here see if I'm happy with that placement and then push it down and get that gusset back up so it's hard to see here with the black on the black but um, yeah that one I'm going to cut down and then the middle part will be a little longer than two side parts and I think that will be fun so now we have one more thing to do and it's on the what I call the back cover we are going to make a large stacked pocket and for that we have two pieces of O same measurements and same scoring only the tape applying will be a little bit different so on the first piece we are going to apply our tape on all three sides that have a score line between the cut edge and the score line on your dented side so on all three sides and I never go all the way to the edge because uh, you're going to cut it away any anyway so I'm only going from score line to score line with my tape and for the other piece you are going to apply your tape only on the short sides so only on this half inch flap on the shorter edge not on the bottom and once we have done that we are going to make a punch again with the envelope punch board just because we did it on all our pockets and I want it to be the same So this piece also has a little bit of a weird measurement. Well, first we are going to cut. So on the one with tape on three sides you are going to miter like a normal pocket. And on the other piece O you are going to cut on the half inch score line on the short side up to your intersection of the score lines. And then from the bottom you are going to cut at an angle. So I will show you that again on the other side, cut straight on your score line on the short side and then with an angle from the bottom to the intersection of the score lines and then that's what you will cut away. So now I'm going to make that punch with the envelope punch board and these pieces are 9 and 3 eighths of an inch in total so to find what's the center of that uh, I'm going to make a quick measurement but I came to the conclusion that you have to be at 4 inches and 13 of 16 and that's just under your 4 and 3 quarters so you do that on both pieces if you like to do it of course you don't necessarily have to do it or if you don't have the envelope punch board you can use another punch or just don't do it and here I almost went wrong but with the tape on the three sides you are going to fold on all three score lines to create that pocket so again quickly check if there is no overlapping and then burnish that shorter side as well 
and then for the other one you will only fold on your side score lines and then I try to show you that I have a little thing sticking out there and you can easily just cut that away with your scissors so this is going all the way on the back of the folio so first the normal pocket and here I'm not going to bump it up against that half inch but I'm really going towards the score line of our previous layer so I'm just staying away slightly from that score line and make sure that I'm lined up on my side edges so I just like to remove all the tape backing at once when I place a pocket but you do however you feel comfortable going so I'm starting in one corner and then bring it along the bottom to the other side where I want it and then stick the edges down so that's the first one and then the second piece we will be able to place that in the pocket and you will stop automatically at your score line So we are going to just shove that in there, we will stop at the score line, make sure that we are straight and I almost went wrong here but I was able to lift it up. Place it on the edge nicely and then do the same thing on the other side. And that's the construction for this folio so we can close everything up. So if you like it, uh, you can find the cutting guide on my website and I will do my best to make videos of the decoration part for this project. So I hope you that's something that you're interested in and you like to see. So for now, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.